Radio. <laughs> You're listening to The Wart on Govs Radio. Hey, uh, moron, it's pronounced The Wart. What the hell is a wart? It's pronounced The Wart. What is it? The Wart? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that again. This is The Wart on Govs Radio. It is The Wart. Not wart, not fort, not short. The wart. I'm sorry, I just don't know what that means. When do you guys start drinking? Who says we haven't been drinking? Where's mine? If I say it correctly this time, can I have a drink? Uh, we'll think about it. You're listening to The Words on Govs Radio. Nah, we're back. Wow, that was loud. Sorry, my fault. I just got... Ah, I'm back. I think I've been drinking too much With light party. Yeah. I could drink a few more of those lighthouses, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Uh, so we cracked open some new beers. Oh, God, I'm on camera now. What? I'm on camera now. Oh, I didn't start the feed yet. Uh, oh, here don't. we go. Anybody listening, uh, we are going to go live to Instagram. You can, uh, again, see Dan, and, and this time you'll get to see Pete. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, it was on me a little bit and Dan before. Uh, now we're going to go to them. Mm. And uh, Yeah, sure. I hate uh, seeing how bald I am. That's I, the it's problem. the light. It's the light. <laughs> you know what? You know what Graz does. Uh, Graz wears a black beanie, and they call him the uh, the black ball. Graz, you there? It's called a black. It's black testicle. Oh, you're the black <laughs> testicle. That's right. Yeah. I, first of all, this is the greatest show I've ever been on. Oh, uh, Anthony Graz, you day, who is the host of Limo Talk here at Govs Radio, is here to say hello. You are. You're the host of Govs Radio. What? You're the host of Limo Talk. I'm the host of. I am I the host? Are you drinking talk? tonight? Have you started you? drinking? No. <laughs> I'm I the host? Yeah, got what? I'm, I'm going to sleep. I've been working, oh, yeah. and I'm overnight. Oh. Here's what I want you to do. Okay, First yeah. of all, you yeah. need to get this show up so I can listen to it overnight. I'm going to Albany. Oh, when are you going? Tomorrow? I'm going tonight, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, No promises on that one, guy. <laughs> I have to do some editing. There's no way that's going up tonight. I cursed a lot, Grass. No, it actually oh, wasn't, hi, wasn't too bad. How are you? What's up, buddy? How's everything? Great. It wasn't too bad. Grass, Dan, say, how's, Grass. Uh, how's your Fire Island Brewery doing? Oh, uh, it's delicious. delicious. <laughs> uh, we're here with Dan. <laughs> Grass, say hi to Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Grass? Good, Dan. You see the, see the, uh, the microphone to the right of you? Uh, yes, I do. Don't go near it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's where it's, I am. What do I, why do you have, do you have the phone? Oh, you're over there now? See, I'm not on Instagram, so I don't know where you got. You're on my microphone? I Please, guess so. Please, get me another cover, old tool. No. You know, <laughs> what, what, his ears are bad now? What are you talking about? I, can, well, I, I can't see from Instagram, but aren't you guys, is there somebody on my microphone? Yeah, Pete's on your mic. But you, it depends on where you sit that night. I mean, if Hector's in, you're on one. Well, now, and then and now we're do, again, we're do doing something. freaking show prep over the air again, Duras. You, you draw us into show prep on the air every time. Hey, what, Graz? What's the schedule like next week, huh? <laughs> Graz, well, what are you, what are you, you doing you to the microphone? Next week, we're, we're pretty free. <laughs> okay, wide open. I got it. Uh, I have. I actually have a question. I don't want to uh, kill the show. So here we go, Dan. My, our, our producer, Thomas Santiago, wants to go on a beer and wine tour in March. Okay. And I'm taking him to bait. I do beer tours. I do wine tours out of Baiting Hollow, uh, Lenzo Puglesi out of the Library Cafe. He wants me to choose one brewery by Baiting Hollow to mm-hmm. go to. Where would I go? Um, Greenport. I guess well, so. Well, he has to. I, well, I don't, I don't honestly know where. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. Baiting Hollow is like 72 off the, off the Long Island Expressway. It's over by Splish Splash. I okay, that's also <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I hate to admit it, like so. My my wife is the Long Islander in the family, and I'm from Jersey, so I am. You're useless. I am. <laughs> I am. Graz is very forward with. But I, if I were to recommend one brewery to yeah. go to, I'd recommend Fire Island. Brewery. There you go. Boom. That's there, where it was going. Done. Come, I come would to, uh, too, but I didn't get a little further than. No, I he's in Bayshore. He's on the way. You get everyone uh, Bayshore. Where's he leaving out of? Let's leave it out of farming. We're leaving, get everyone boozed leaving, up. We're leaving out of the, uh, the library cafe. Right. So, are you kidding me? You're oh, going to go to 25 oh, Drexel Drive in Bayshore. <laughs> Cross, I got gonna... two breweries for you for the yeah, price exactly. of one. Yeah, exactly. Two breweries for the price of one. Yes. You can go to Great South Bay. You and called then you can in walk at the right Dan time. In the same building. Dan, I do. Um, I do. I've been doing it for about ten years. We're going, and, and now I don't know if you're familiar with Bayshore. Uh, God, I, I'm going to. He's in it. He's, he's familiar. Oh, your turn. <laughs> 
Uh, there's a, 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 a Lessings just took over. What's the, the, the bar that Lessings just took over? I told Is that Southside Hotel? What? No, I don't know. No, it's no, um, it's, the it one in... Over, they took over a bar in Bayshore. Um, Matty Irishman? No. No. I know God. which one it is. We'll talk, we can figure it out later. So well, anyway, we want, we want to do beer tours from out of there that. out to a couple of places. So right. may you recommend mm-hmm. it come to you and somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're coming out of Bayshore, you might as well stop at all the Bay. You might as well just uh, yeah, do you Bayshore. Got, honestly, yeah. Yeah. you, you got do four Bayshore. stops in Bayshore. Yeah. They're awesome, and they're all awesome. Yeah. Okay. There's a few in so, Riverhead. That's not far. You know, not too yeah, far. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, but even then, why why do that? I, know. I mean, unless he really wants to go on a wine tour, then I mean, you're gonna how, go out there anyway. How do you want to get? Mm-hmm. Then you stop out there. But if you're gonna stay, you might as well leave out of Farmingdale. You know, yep. to and from the library, and then you stop yep. at uh, in Drexel Drive, which is where Great South Bay and Fire Island is uh, with Dan. Then you can go can down. Can you take to- fifteen people, Dan? Yes. You do it on Saturdays. I, you know what, you. Why are we doing this on air? Yeah, <laughs> again, <laughs> you tell me what. <laughs> Listen, I have his card here. I'll just Gross, give you I'll a leave a card for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Gross, if you want me to come on your show, we can talk about yes, this. Yes, tomorrow. Show all day. Limo talk tomorrow, eight to ten, right here on Govs Radio. Why are these questions on? Yeah, air? we curse a lot. <laughs> No, I, we we don't curse looking, any I'm more than we do. To take sponsorship from my studio there. See that old tool room right there? He built. Yeah, it's my it's mine now. So we want to get like a mate, like like the Fire Island Brewery studio. All right, yeah, I'll bring in a tin tacker. There you go. Why do we? I, I think I have one outside. It's Magic we Hat. <laughs> we'll just make it the Magic Hat studio too. Pete, shut the hell up! You take my call. No, Pete that's me. Humor that's me. And, and <laughs> All right, listen, guys. Tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna talk more at length about this, and I'm dead serious. <laughs> the The tour should come out of Farmingdale and head out to Bayshore. There's four really great breweries out there we can talk about. Now, what's the best beer that comes out of Fire Island Brewery? Well, uh, so right now we're drinking the Red Wagon IPA, which is going to segue into our last section here. Um, Red Wagon is one of the flagships of Fire Island Brewery, and it is delicious. I've always gone to this when I'm looking for an IPA on tap at a local bar. Um, we also had today uh, the uh, Isla, Isla del Fuego, which is Isla del Fuego. And or the IDA, mm-hmm. uh, IDF, 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 and then we also had the Lighthouse Ale, which was uh, delicious amber. Um, do you so, make a stout? We do. Oyster, have you been listening? A sunken fairy oyster stout. Yes. Is that good? Is that good with like like a lobster bisque or something like Ooh. that? It, whatever, it's good with whatever you want it to be good nice. with. Dan, you gotta bisque. do me a favor. You got you're gonna have to curse when you come on my show. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got you. There it is. <laughs> There if you is. listen to some all broadcast, they should have kicked you off a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep. <laughs> there it is. All right. Pete. Pete. Graz. I love you. We love having you on. I'm glad you called. It's always Stay good. well, Pete. Say hello to your family. And Mike, I'll see you, so- I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Dan. Holla I'll see you at the Bye, next Graz. PTA meeting, Graz. Have a good night. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Can't wait. in the I same town. <laughs> Shut up, you guys. Make a fun of me now. No, I can make my show again tomorrow night. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure. Limo Talk tomorrow that, night. Yeah, Limo Talk. Grabs the day. Here we go. Here we go. Limo Talk. Talk grabs the day. GubsRadio.com. The work rule. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Sounds like Graz needs Bye. a nap. All right. Later. <laughs> All right. He's I like he's, him. He's, I can't <laughs> wait to be on Oh, that no. Show. He's, he's, there's nothing Ooh. better than Graz. I'm telling you. That's the only reason why I stuck <laughs> with him for a year and a half now is because of that. <laughs> because it's just... Uh, it, it, it's ADD radio beyond ADD radio. I'm, God, I'm is that it. what it should, I, I, I mean, you were here for the one show. I was here for the one. You show. You couldn't get a word in edgewise, right? It was. There's no way you could was, talk because there's a thousand things okay, going why on. Why are you so one. quiet? And boom! <laughs> I love it's it. just like that. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not as structured as potentially what. We, really? No, <laughs> structure. What's that? But damn, is it a lot of fun to listen to? And uh, go to GothamGoldGrass.com for all your limo needs and. For the, uh, I guess, the archive of all the podcasts, you can also hear them on Gov's radio on the replays throughout the work day. Anytime, tune in and check it out. More than likely, since there's 34 shows of his and only three of mine, you're going to hear his more than you hear mine. Or more than you heard uh, New York Sports Mafia. Mafia. There you go. Um, so that was awesome. Thanks, Grass, for calling in. We appreciate it. So, again, we're drinking the Red Wagon IPA. Tell us a little bit about this. It's one of my favorites from you. I gotta admit. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, I, not much to tell. I mean, it's a it's a straight up American style IPA. Um, you know, definitely more malt and hop forward than most, or more malt forward than than most IPAs these days. But you know, we try to we try to hit that balance of um, kind of 
uh, you know, nutty, caramelly, malty, yeah. plus. Yep. You I know, like I hot imme- candy, immediately like the color. Bright citrus. Yeah. The color is what really centennial. does it for me. When I yeah. when I see a beer of that magnitude with that color, it just I'm excited. Yeah. I could just go by that most of the time. It's um again, this is you know, this is an exercise in uh subtlety. It's um we're not trying to hit you over the head with uh with a juice bomb. We're not trying to, you know, give you the most bitter thing in the world. We're just trying to give you something that's that's gonna work with a steak, a burger, that burger. you know, if you're you know, if it was a long day on the beach when you're you know, if you had a tough day lifeguarding and you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's true. Some it's, uh, it's David point. Hasselhoff gave you a hard time. <laughs> you're like, oh I need to I really need to drown Where's my summer? I need something hoppy. I need summer you when know? I need her. Yeah. She was my favorite Nicole oh. Eckert. Mm, I don't know. Summer. I I didn't I mean, watch for much Baywatch goes Baywatch. I mean Pam Anderson. Yeah. Uh, too yeah. big for me. I like the uh the, <clears throat> the, the the girl next door. Pam Anderson before she was Pam Anderson Lee. Good point. Before the boat incident. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where it wasn't too dirty, but it was... Wait, did the boat hit her face? No, the... She, she had a lot hit of something with her face. <laughs> uh, something definitely hit her face. I don't think it was the moon. Um, I, I, should, I should be a joke setter <laughs> over. <laughs> yes, it, knock him out, Dan. Um, we had... Um, oh, what did we have? We had uh, several things. Oh, I, I know what I wanted to ask you. Dan, um... What I don't, what people probably don't know, is what goes in and the work that goes into what you as a head brewer do each day. Can you run us through like a typical day? Uh, do, you, do you have to go in tomorrow? Uh, I do. Okay, so do. W- did, give us just a, a, an idea of what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Okay, when you walk in and you know, what throughout the day, what you have to do and what your responsibilities are. Yeah, so like, I mean, it, you know, it's a small business, so there's a lot of. Um, kind of jumping around, you kind of have to be flexible. So, um, you know, most days I'm taken up with, um, you know, brewing activities. So like, you know, on a given brew day, like say if I'm, if I'm getting ready to brew. So, so we brewed a, a Maybach actually. Oh, nice. Ooh. Um, well, I got a guy that's going to love that. Nice. Yeah. I so like that freaking loves Maybach. Oh, you do yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah dead guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So last week we, we decided, you know, um, we were going to kind of try to put down something a little bit special, a little bit bigger, and and uh, we made a, a Maybach that we're shooting for like six point eight seven percent on. Ooh, nice. Okay, um, nice. it's a you know basic, pretty basic malt bill, um, a lot of German stuff, a little bit of wheat thrown in there, some Munich malt for a little color, um, and then we used only one hop, Saint Celia, I believe is the pronunciation, but you know it's a low a uh, a low alpha acid. Uh, German style hop. So now, what's the difference between that and some, you know, another popular hop variety? So uh, I, there, there are a couple of different. I, I kind of look at them as hop families. So there's like German noble hops, which are you know your Tetnang, your Hollertau, your Saas, uh, you know, and the and the families that come from them. And Saint Celia is one of those. And which one uses the Saas? You had mentioned it before. Uh, Black Forest Brewhouse, Black the Pilsner. Oh, yeah. okay. I knew it was. Um, so yeah, the the Saint Celia kind of comes from this this uh, German noble heritage, and I, I be, I'm not a again I'm not a hop biologist, so uh, <laughs> why not, Dan? <laughs> I know. So I I'm pretty sure there's also some English like you know Golding Fuggle heritage in there too. Uh, so it you know kind of has this like it was like dog breeding. Noble. Yeah, it, it kind of is. <laughs> no, I'm I mean, serious. It, I mean, look, it's definitely uh, strains on strains, and they got a crossbreed and hybrids. Like Gregor and... Gregor Mendel started out. By Absolutely. crossbreeding roses, Absolutely. and, and yeah. you know that's that's why we're where we are today with hops, you know. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, basically, like you know, this is a it's a hybrid hop that has you know some really good flavor and aroma characteristics. So, you know, we we wanted to do a Maybach. We really like lagers. It's something that we feel that we can do exceptionally well, um, and we also want to do beers that are going to be approachable for most people. Like we do, there are a lot of guys doing sours and hazy IPAs and stuff on the island. Goes. And yeah, it goes is, you know, so we don't want to, we're not, we're not at a point where we're ready to kind of dip our toe into that arena. So we're going to do stuff that we like, that we think that there's a, 
There's enough the people doing for. that stuff. Yeah. You don't need to be the other person doing that stuff. You exactly. Can do yeah. like you said, the solid stuff that just works. Yeah. Is anyone I mean, else on Long Island making a Maybach? Right. I there? can't it's, think you know, of anybody so off the top of my head. No, at least not, that's not a good enough reason right there are. to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so because I know enough people that like Maybach yeah. in general. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. That they would choose that over something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially a local brew. Yeah. So, you know, we make the beer. All right. Well, okay. So yeah, I'm, we're talking about my my day as a brewer. So, you know. So my my brew day for this Maybach was Jesus Christ, sorry. I I That's weird. thought that was my phone. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to check my phone. No, sure. Um, no, so I thought that uh, you know it'd be fun to kind of brew a Maybach. Um, kind of tweaked a, a little bit of a recipe. Kind of you know used um, some of the parameters as far as like you know what we wanted our ABV to be, uh, what we wanted our color to be, what we wanted our um, you know, bitterness to be and yada, yada, yada. So basically using those parameters and the materials that we had on hand, I put together a pretty basic, simple recipe in um, um, Beer Smith. I think I, I, I always forget. Is that a there's, piece of software or something? You yeah. Oh. So there's it's homebrewing software. There's like Beer Smith and then there's like, I, I, I forget the other one. Um, anyway, I digress. Put together this recipe. Um Weighed out all the ingredients, milled it in into our grist case. Next day, came in, had the hot liquor tank heated up to 190 degrees, mashed in basically, you know, um, for 15, 20, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. By blending this 190 degree water with cold city water, um, as it was hitting the, the grain, it was, as it was being augered in, and that's basically mashing in, right? So, um, after that whole process, we let the uh, the malt and the uh, water sit. Um, looks like a porridge, acts like a porridge. It's a big, thick mash. Mm. So um, after about an hour, we check and make sure that the um, uh, all the starches have, have been converted over to sugars. It, stop me if I'm getting too scientific. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, we that's like it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, sugars are converted. We cut the uh, cut the mash there we start recirculating which is called a vorloff okay. um so that basically just kind of pre-clarifies before we start uh running the and the for wort. layman's terms it's just a, a pump that comes in and out and back and through exactly right? yeah. yeah we're basically recirculating the liquid from the bottom of the mash tun to the top of so the it gets mash. an equal amount yeah. of yeah you know the absorption of the various things that may be involved in yeah, and basically, basically the mash acts as a the, like the the physical structure of the mash, like all that spent grain. There's there's uh, you know the husks of the grain that act as kind of a filter bed, and they kind of help us filter out the the floury stuff, all the chunks and stuff. So you know we when we actually run off and collect the sweet wort into the kettle, uh, sweet wort. There it is. Um, <laughs> okay. We yeah. actually. I don't know why I have to go with the gunshot. No, Again, either. the only thing I have on we this machine. On that it's got to be. It's got to be the. Can it's got to be the can opener. Uh, I'll I'll, um, I'll isolate it and put it in here eventually. Sh- 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 that's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we're shooting. Sounds the top like of the it. same thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, we we collect the the sweet wort in the kettle, uh, and then we boil it, and then we add the hops, um, and that that whole process, you know, from like basically milling in and mashing in to. Uh, casting out a a fresh batch of Maybach wort that that usually takes about an about eight hours. Um, okay, okay. And so cuts. that's in like recirculation in that eight hours. No, so it's you're you're so you're basically doing this mash in phase for about half an hour in the beginning, and then you're doing the uh, mash for about an hour, and then you're doing the recirculation phase for about twenty minutes to half an oh, hour, okay, and then right. you're doing the. Um, Work collection phase, which is you know could could be up to two hours, and then the boiling, which is uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> every oh. time now it's got to be I got to keep it potted up. But we'll have can openings later. Okay. And the, is uh, there a sound effect that we could do for the wort? Like, is there a, a a pump running in the background that we could? I don't I think, know. I think that would be just as out of place as a gunshot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just be like a hump. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, all the all the sound effects that you could take from the brewery are very. Uh, obscure, right? Just you know, oh, look. oh, they, that's an air compressor. Oh, that's a pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that could be tap, which is just <laughs> metal on metal. Kachink, kachink. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much it. Ah, goddamn it! That's a brewer <laughs> hitting his <laughs> thumb on something. Um, 
So yeah, you know, basically like make t- taking a taking a batch of beer from grain to fermenter takes about eight hours. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also um, you know cellar work, like you know, not only making sure the tanks are clean to put the you know the fresh wort in with the yeast and you know start your you know clean fermentation and have a nice clean finished product. You know, there's also like some people don't think about like dropping yeast out of out of a tank because the longer your yeast is in, in contact with your beer, the more likely you are to have um, yeast autolysis flavors or you know kind of funky meaty, right? Um, nothing nothing that you'd want in your beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know there's also dry hopping, filtering if you're doing something like most of our beers are filtered, so it's a little bit less of uh, of an amount of time to get the beer from being um, unfiltered to filtered, right? Um, but there's still a lot of setup and breakdown of the equipment. A lot I would of imagine, of the yeah, equipment. just constant, yeah. And, and what about it's, it's the thing we always talk sterilization. So mm-hmm. how how are you constantly making sure you have like a sterile environment? So we use we use two different ways to do that. Um, there's either hot water sterilization. So you know, I'll basically like. Like if I'm filtering, I'll hook up my uh, my trap filter uh, to my you know my product line, uh, and then I'll just basically run 190 degree water through that for like yeah. half an hour, 45 minutes, seal that up, burn it let all that out. cool. Yeah, basically burn it off. That's exactly what we say. And I do the same thing for my my wort way okay. when I'm casting out. So um, you know, you burn it off and you you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, just I'm sorry. Stop. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. All right. I'll turn it off. At post production. Yes, post-production. that's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so you you um, yeah, we burn it off and then you know we lock it up and you know theoretically it's Sealed sanitized. There, yeah. yeah. Um, we can also use uh, parasitic acid, which is essentially like um, hydrogen peroxide on oh, okay. steroids. You, you can use iodine. I I know people that use bleach, but that's highly un unadvisable. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. So yeah, you know, high level like you know. Heat or steam sterilization, followed by chemical sterilization, mm-hmm. and then it's kind of like a similar yeah. way as you know in the restaurant business, the chemicals that run through the dishwasher, mm-hmm. and it's basically a hot water wash. Then yeah. it's a um, a detergent. Then it's a um, well, Qu- quaternary yeah. quaternary ammonium is actually that's a the uh, second round, right? And then yeah, the third round the is a um, oh, correct. Yeah, so the detergent that... sanitizer, and then there's like the thing that gets like for instance glass uh-huh. that'll get the um, rinse agent, yeah, rinse agent, rinse agent. Yeah. There you go. So I, I know it's a three step. I know process my dishwasher has a has a funny term for it, but it's something I don't remember. No, I, I, don't I just know changed it, it last week, and I, I don't remember what it's called. Something, something. It's just called rinse. It says rinse on it. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a very similar process. It's just yeah. a th- couple stages of basically mm-hmm. getting rid of all the things that could have gotten stuck to the stainless steel, right? It's stainless yeah. steel. So yeah, I mean, um, you're going to have very little contact and very little scraping on most of your uh, ingredients. Yeah. So you're not going to get you know gouges that you have to really sit there and brush yeah. out and things like the, that. So. You know the one the one piece of equipment, all well, the two pieces of equipment that generally require the most attention are the kettle and the um, the lauder ton. Okay. And those we also we don't we is don't that because generally... you're adding the ingredients directly yeah. in there and it's so, yeah there's there's uh, so in the boil kettle um, you build up a lot more residue because you're boiling the liquid mm-hmm. you're you're depositing a, you're 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 precipitating a lot of the um, ingredients up to the top, and then it gets a ring. Yeah, and you, you see a lot more. You know, it's like if you take the, you know, you take a, bo- a, a pot and you boil water in it, and then you dump that water out, and then you add more water and you boil that. You know, you eventually get a ring of, you know, correct, yeah, deposit. Correct. Um, so we get a lot of that. Um, so yeah, those are. The, so the the kettle is probably the dirtiest thing that we deal with, the okay. lauder ton second most, but those two pieces of equipment don't And that necessarily keeps you busy throughout be. a day. I mean, those aren't easy, yeah. quick fixes. That takes a good couple hours to really make sure that's... Yeah, I'll actually dedicate an entire day. Like oh, every wow, yeah. every two, three months, I'll dedicate an entire day just to cleaning my, my Do you have a house. schedule? Like, do you have a, like a whiteboard of things that need to get done and you keep... I do, actually. I, yeah. I used to take pictures of it to show people, but I, I no, <laughs> seriously. I no, I would imagine, because to, to yeah. keep track of that mm-hmm. and go, ah, oh, is today the third f- Friday of the month and should yeah. I be doing this? You know? Yeah. I would imagine you'd have to... Ke- Keep yeah, some I'll sort go of through and like I'll you know I'll take my tentative schedule and I'll write down all the all the um, high level activities that we're doing like oh you know brew this is a brew day this is a brew day this is a filter day this is a you know 
packaging day, whatever it might be. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I What's guess. What's the most exciting day? The most exciting day. I mean, you know, first packaging day ever was very exciting. Oh, yeah. First, um, and, you know, we did we did canning, and then we also did bottling, so. Okay. Um, and you, of course, had to just take one right off the line and crack it and say Yeah, and that was day. really cool, you That's know. That's a cool experience, um, I can imagine. Yeah. So first brew day was also really exciting. Um, this is really cool. You know, I mean, there's a lot of... There's a lot of excitement to be had in the brewing industry yeah, if you really look for it, you know, because, you know, it's not like, you know, we're not making, we're not making mattresses, we're not making Bud <laughs> yeah. Light. So like, if you did, it would be delicious. Yeah, <laughs> people, people are very excited about awesome. this stuff. So that's a big, uh, that's for me a big um, source of excitement. You know? Right, like, absolutely. I don't, I don't necessarily, like, you know, if, uh, to be straight up, like, it, you know, it took me about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to drive here from Patchog. so. Oh, you came from Patchog? I now did, I feel yeah. so bad. No, don't, please. <laughs> I mean, that's great that you came. That's actually really was, awesome. Like, and now I, I have really that as leverage to anybody else that gives me <laughs> shit. Yeah. About, like, I'm like a half an hour, like, f*** you, Dan came out from Patchog to I Governor's Ridge. You could just be like, a, I got, this can this can easily be another Fire Island episode. That's right. We could do it tomorrow. And, he, <laughs> yeah. and he'd be definitely willing to come out and sure, share with us some oyster stuff that he has in a cellar somewhere. That'd be fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I got two questions for you. Yeah. Number one, I noticed the change in artwork. Uh huh. I'm a big artwork guy. Mm-hmm. I love the way artwork looks on cans. I love what people are doing with it, hiring local artists and stuff like that. Tell me about the change in the artwork on the cans, because I know they were different, and now they almost seem like children's story-esque, and I love it. Yeah. I really do love the. It's almost like a rebranding. It's yeah, it's definitely um, and it, it's it's absolutely a, a rebranding. You know, it's it's kind of taking the, um, the low key like fun nature of what Fire Island is and throwing it back into the brand. You know, like um, so, a company called Sea Level it, are the folks that actually do it. Um, and now, what it, what it's there. Role are they designers? They're, the, they're or graphic designers. Okay, cool. Um, are they local the, or are they're, they? They're local. Yeah. Okay, so cool. we're yeah we're trying to do you know pretty much everything that we can as locally as possible. Where so, are they out of? Do you know? I mean, uh, I'm sure you know, but uh, oh, I don't. Why do I put you on the spot and say <laughs> no, you no. should know, Dan? <laughs> exactly. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can always follow our our Instagram and there you go. Yeah, I'm sure. Sea level is definitely on there. Like any any of the. Um, any of the images of our branding, mm-hmm. um, sea levels tagged in it. That's awesome. Um, if not, you know, reach out to it, like DM us on Instagram or, you know, Facebook or Twitter, and, mm-hmm. and uh, or you know, we do have the um, we do have the the brewery hotline. So I don't Ooh. know if you guys. No, I don't know the brewery hotline. Is it on your card? Uh, it, it is not. Summon um, of a bitch. It is. Well, you have it, Ed. Uh, Make sure I, people know the brewery hotline uh, at Fire Island Brewery. That's uh, Instagram at Fire Island Beer. Is that correct? Uh, oh, yes. Fire, yeah, Fire Island Beer, at Fire Island Beer. You're also on Twitter. I see you sent a lot of information out to uh, your listenership on Twitter. Appreciate that. We try to, yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's how the kids find out about the fun things that are going on. <laughs> we got to right? get the kids involved. I know. <laughs> these these millennials. By the way, can I just let you know, because I know you've been seeing me, my phone's blowing up. My, uh-huh. my thing. Are you ready for this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you. Mm-hmm. Live on air today. Might as well, because this is live and impactful. First to time the... ever. No, no, well, yes and no. Um, I got a text message from my bar manager mm-hmm. um, who got a Yelp review. Now, us in the uh, restaurant industry wish Yelp would f***ing burn to the ground because it's a bunch of angry people who didn't get what they want. And for hospitality-wise, we try to give everybody what they want, but there comes a point where they're the I'm sorry, and I've been in the business for 20 years. There comes a point where I've done everything I can to exhaust every moment of my patience with you, and I'm very good at patience. I have kids. I teach high school. I have so much patience. People call me a saint. All the patience. patience. All the patience in the world is within me, trust me, and I'm the most easygoing person, but it comes to the point where I am now not the problem anymore. You're the problem. So anyway, uh, she got a Yelp review. Mm Mm-hmm to the restaurant um, with someone complaining about the restaurant itself being overpriced, watered down drinks, and the fact that whoever served that person uh, claimed that we have no policy for buybacks and we you're not owed a buyback. 
Okay, so now, first of all, this never happens because there is no buyback policy anywhere in. There's not a free drink policy. It's yeah, free drink, right? On the Don't give me the meatballs, I, right? It's not just meatballs; it's anywhere because I've heard it in other places too, and people say it. And I, I'm usually pretty upfront. I said, "You're going to have a beer. You're not going to get a free beer because of that. This isn't fucking Chili's. You're not going to get a two for one. I'm sorry." <laughs> Number two, and I don't, I don't say that to them. I'm saying that in my head. By I don't, the way, I don't, I don't think Chili's offers a two for one. Right, well, anytime. Right, well, it's buy one get one, yeah. day, whatever it is. And it's the same amount of beer if you put it in a. Wait, I've do they it. actually do that? Chili's, they yeah, used to, oh yeah, yeah. it was two first. Yeah, yeah, it's two first. And here I am going to like local restaurants and stuff <laughs> trying to do the right thing. No, nah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, the local restaurants do it right because they they implement this idea of. Uh, keeping the customers happy. Mm -hmm. And if you run up a, a large enough tab or if you're you're buying and you're consistently buying and you, you've given me a card and it came to the point, I am someone that will absolutely hook you up. There's no there's no doubt about it. There's not like uh, a thing where I'm like, on the third drink, you get the fourth drink for free. There's nothing like that. If there was, it'd be printed on the wall. It'd be in our menus. It would say that. Then you know you're going to get three It'd be a terrible business model. It'd be terrible. It doesn't exist. It's It's, it's absolutely ludicrous. So someone wrote this Yelp review of the whole thing, uh -huh. and now there's, you know, of course, 15... Basically accusing us your of... restaurant of not being the pay less shoes of <laughs> Or over-serving people. <laughs> like that's, or yeah. over-serving people, too. I mean, first of all, the drinks aren't watered down. As a cocktail menu, it's been derived from one bartender who absolutely knows how she creates a cocktail. She knows what she's doing. And so these drinks are not watered down. If you want to get a uh, vodka soda, you're going to get a vodka soda with the equal amounts of what you're supposed to get. So don't order a vodka soda if you don't want a vodka soda. If you want something strong, then get yourself vodka on the rocks and get a side soda and mix it yourself. Because otherwise, you're going to get your standard pour, your four, whatever, two ounce, three ounce, whatever you want. I'm going on a rant. I apologize, Dan. But it just pisses me off because now everyone's uh, chiming in. Um, and everyone's going, let's just give up our shifts. <laughs> this, we're out. Um, whatever. So anyway, um, the, <laughs> the, the whole premise of buybacks, and, and I don't know, mm -hmm. as you, did you ever bartend? You ever? Uh, yes. Of, I, I mean, I'm sure yeah. everything you just told us in your story, there's gotta be a moment where you're bartending. Um, there was never a policy written into anything. You would have a manager maybe tell you, okay, this is our policy, but it's not in writing, nor do you have to do exactly what it says. So it really gets to me that there are people that, again, are probably uh, coming into a place and thinking about, ah, oh, I can't wait to get my free drink. Every place you walk into, you think Applebee's is going to give you a f***ing buyback? I don't think so. Chili's going to give you a buyback just because our name isn't a, a brand across America that you, you deserve a buyback? I, I, I just don't get it. Thoughts? My, my feeling... <laughs> it's too much. I'm sorry. My feeling is, like... It's great um, that you're so passionate about that, but like when you when you go in a restaurant, right? You're you're basically entering into a contract where, you know, I, I give you money for your services and for your goods, right? So I I pay the bar I tip the bartender for his yep. service and I pay the restaurant for their goods and services, right? So when you get a watered down drink, if you do get a watered down drink, then order a beer. Then order a beer. <laughs> I don't think your um, your problem is necessarily, you know, with the, um, the bartender. with the bartender. It's with the fact that you know you just happen to like you know like if you there. It's a it's a it's a grayscale thing, you know. I like, I like what you said. You enter into a contract the minute you walk in there. There's a relationship that happens mm -hmm. the minute you start sitting down and opening a tab or starting something, and that includes both the bartender's part. And the customer's part. Yeah. It's a relationship. Yeah. I find that immediately. So it starts with, you know, the the uh, the salutations. Mm -hmm. um, it starts with their first order and the information. Mm -hmm. um, and then it includes then what goes on then after any conversation that it includes and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if you're sitting there at the bar and you're really truly asking, you know, when am I going to get my buyback drink? Again, that's the point where you've crossed the line. You've ruined the relationship and you're a soul. Like a bad girlfriend or a bad boyfriend, depending on who's listening. I'll, I will preface the next thing that I say by saying that the customer is never wrong. I know, I know. Hospitality, but, <laughs> I got it. I understand because I've dealt with a lot of, you know, but management. But you're not, you're not wrong about, no, about I know. thinking that. Like You're saying the right thing, but yeah. you're thinking on the same wavelength as me. Yeah, exactly. Because I know you're human and you know that's how 
happy people can be. I mean, if, you're, if your first thought is not like, I can't wait to have a really good experience and stay here for three or four drinks, and then, you know, at that point, maybe, you know, the bartender is going to be like, oh, this guy's, you know, the, or this couple or whoever, you know, whatever the you right, know, scenario is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll throw some, you know, maybe it's an appetizer or whatever. Right. You know? I don't buy food back because I can't. That yeah. I can't do. But I can definitely buy you back a bottle of Bud. I mean, yeah. it's a, f- a 4 or $5 bottle of six bottle yeah. bottle of Bud. Fine. If it's overpriced, I get it. That's why I'm buying you back because yeah. for us, it, the cost is a dollar. And what's it going to hurt? Yeah. It's only going to improve our relationship. Yeah. But if you're going to sit there and ask for it and wonder what our policy is, again, if there was a policy to be written down in the stuff that you kind of walked in on mm-hmm. and have agreed to a contract, which there isn't. So that's what bothers me about the whole situation. Yeah, that's it's just, obviously whoever's – Whoever's going into a bar and and kind of pre pre anticipating a a buyback scenario is like a little a little in their own reality. That's and correct. Like I would say, yeah, hey, you know, don't. Uh, and nor would, uh, nor as a oh, bartender you don't, would I you ever don't need sit that there. guy's business. Yeah, no, honestly. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what people are saying. Like, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a joke. They don't deserve to be there anyway then because they don't even – you know, it, it was like that uh, – did I send you that laugh or uh, funny or die clip about bartending? Where, yeah, I, so. where I, I, I'd like something with tequila. He goes, oh, why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you turn around, uh, come back in the bar, sit down, and act like you've been in a f***ing bar before. <laughs> like that, that's the kind of thing I'm saying. Like people just act <laughs> like they just don't have a clue. Like yeah. I, I, you've been in a bar before. You know the deal. Maybe you've been spoiled at somewhere mm-hmm. else, and that's no, a business that probably is failing. Don't come in here to a business that's thriving and ask for something. You'll yeah. get it if you deserve it. That's the way it should work. Yeah, it's like you don't you don't go into a like I wouldn't I wouldn't walk into a, a Jeep dealer and say I'd I'd like to test drive a Tesla, please. <laughs> um, you just uh, you're you're in the you wrong can, place. You can keep asking, you know, and they, like I'm sure people are gonna like respectfully say, look, I'm sorry, sir, you you're, you're not gonna be able to drive that. That rocket ship. But I want a Tesla here now. That's the way they. That that's my point. You know, there's there's another really funny um, video clip that I've seen online where it's it's a a young lady that goes up to a taco truck, like a you know, like one of these you know, like a a classy little food truck, right? And guys making tacos, and she's like, "I'd like one taco, please, but can you can you replace the chicken with turkey, Uh, preferably sliced turkey, and can you take that tortilla and make that wheat bread? And (laughs) I'd like some mayo and lettuce and tomato, please." And it's like, "You wanted a turkey sandwich?" You walked up to a taco truck, like, (laughs) and you're asking for we're good. We're we're happy to we're happy to accommodate, but (laughs) within the bounds that makes sense. That's really what it comes down to. Like if somebody came to the brewery and was like, yeah, I'd like, you know, I'd like a, Can I have a Guinness? scotch and soda. <laughs> Can I have a Guinness? I'd be like, I have a, I have an oyster stout, yeah. but I can offer you, but yeah. I want a Guinness, and they told me it would be here. Yeah. That's the way. I, it just baffles my mind sometimes how yeah. people think they're going to be treated in a bar, and they, it's they they think they're owed something. That's hey, that's my problem. Human nature, man. Human I know. Nature. I'm, I'm with you. Um, Dan, let me ask you a question. This is my, uh, I asked you the day in the life and I asked you about the, the labels, but at what point in all of this that we talked about tonight, did you finally step back and say, I made it? Was it at Fire Island or was it previous to that or where was it in this timeline? I mean, I, I guess it depends on what your definition of I made, I made it, it is, that you know? I ha- so much so, and, and no offense to either of us, I know we're nobodies, but, um, that there are people calling out to you, wanting to to get to you know know your brewery, know your beer. People are looking for you. People want this in their place. At what point do you have a restaurant calling you saying, "I need more of this"? And you're like, "Oh, oh, snap!" Like people are drinking this. Um, that's a that's a really good question. Like <laughs> you know, like loaded I, question maybe. I don't know. No, I don't think loaded. And I you know I don't think you guys should refer to yourselves as nobodies. I mean, well, like this is a like, three I, episodes in. We're we're getting there. I mean, you know, it's it's been it's been fun. I've I've enjoyed it. I I can't wait to come back, frankly. Awesome. Yeah, well we um we'll definitely have you back. There's no doubt about that. Thank you. But yeah, no, like I can't say that I feel like, you know, I've hit that like I've made it point yet. And I don't know if, you know, I don't know if that's because I don't know what that point was in my life yet because mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm not look, I I'm 31. I haven't seen a, you know, a whole lot of life. Like I've seen some, but I don't know if I've 
I'll been just all wait the till other there. kid. You'll see some life. I know. Yeah, that's. So when you that, have to change an up the backer, then you're going to have the backer. <laughs> up the backer. <laughs> up the My backer. brother-in-law calls it a code black. <laughs> oh, well, that's initially when you get the uh, the tar crap uh, from the initial first first few. This sounds. I think we should have a a whole baby there should talk. Be another yeah the podcast. We just talk like the word, dad talk. and then there's like the baby the, talk, the after show baby talk. Yeah. Where it's the, just, Shit or the reasons, I drink, as <laughs> the reasons <laughs> I drink. The reasons I drink. Yeah, <laughs> that could be a segment. We'll go into that. Uh, but yeah, no, like uh, you know, for me, like beer has been a, it's been a passion. It's not been like a, I'm like I'm not, I, I don't do it for fame. I don't do it for obviously fortune. Um, <laughs> I, I do it because like I, you know I like beer and I think that there is I think beer is going to save the world and you know, I hopefully 100% agree hopefully I have a little influence if on we that, can yeah. drop cases of beer over in Baghdad is that still a place where <laughs> shit going on I don't know I think mm-hmm. they might have a brewery they in may, have a, they may have a problem yeah. ba- Baghdad IPA <laughs> they have bunker uh, bunker oh, they're right a dry now. country yeah. so oh, is they it? are a dry they, country they are a dry country a very, right, so just that's outside country. Country. Let me that. of Iraq that, that's a dry uh, region of the entire world yeah that's a good point <laughs> and so if we drop it in maybe it'll solve a lot of problems mm. are they drinking the mead is that what they mead? drink over there mead no, well, I don't think I so oh, I don't think they, they don't wine. drink anything wine wine wine, wine, wine I think is probably the no closest alcohol. thing they have yeah, to uh, no alcohol huh? booze it's against Muslim faith no no, no booze I'm sorry hashish Oh, hot. well, you can get <laughs> hot hash and uh, cot. opium. You can get cot. opium no, any day no you want. No opium. Cot. But they're allowed that? Cot, three, yeah. Three that's... hots and a cot. No, cot's uh, K A T. Oh, that's a, that's a prison. Uh, something in you would chew, kind of gets you. No, yeah, no. From Is it like understand? tobacco, but like a higher nicotine content? I think it's, it's I've, I've heard it's more like uh, cocoa more, leaf, actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's cool. Right. But like just a beer, and it's not cool. No. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well,. So what, what's next for Fire thank, Island? Thank what's, God we're uh, here on America. What's next for Fire Island? Mm. Um, well, we saw the rebranding, so I like I like that start. When did that thank you. When did that come over? That started um, just before I came on. So that like we the all the products that you see with the new branding mm. are from the Bayshore Brewery. Cool. So, all right. So um, since you moved there, yeah. All right. Awesome. And so what, what do we have coming up in the next uh, few weeks, months, years? Coming down the pike, you're going to yep. see a lot more canned products from us. So Isla del Fuego, Lighthouse Ale, uh, Red Wagon, Sea Salt. Um, I think traditionally we usually see them in bottle. I mean, yeah. that's where I've yep. seen them mostly yeah, exactly. in the distributors and stuff like that. So uh, Stop and Shop, I mean, mm-hmm. has them. So I yeah, yeah definitely want to see um, yeah, some canned so with, I like canned products. I really with, do. With great power comes great responsibility <laughs> and with your own – your own facility in Bayshore comes, you know, the responsibility to, you know, make as much sellable beer as possible. So what we want to do is... <laughs> That's a good point. Um, Someone's got to pay the bills. Yeah. Beer so better. We, you know, uh, one of our priorities was to kind of put more product out there that people are going to want to buy. And we think that that product is going to be Red Wagon, Lighthouse, Sea Salt, Isla del Fuego Got to keep cans. the lights on, right? Yeah. Um, no, the, the, it's a, it definitely a solid lineup. You can keep the wit on too, right? Uh, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit more seasonal. Okay. Um, uh, I really like that. That was summertime surprisingly because kind of I yeah we've had a lot more success with that in the bottle. Like oddly enough, like you look at the numbers and you see where things are doing well, and like you know draft wit hasn't been doing as well as bottled wit. So we're hmm. we're gonna push the bottled thing. You know if. It's probably going to transition to cans, but um, yeah, at this point, I mean, we're, you know, we're happy with, was it the the four that have kind of been, you know, really, you know, kind of swinging for the fences for us. So uh, I think we're going to focus on those, focus on, um, you know, our on-premise presentation and just being, being more present in bars that people go out in. So, um, you know... To your point, Meatball Shop in Farmingdale is definitely, you know, on our list of places that yeah. we want to be. Um, yeah, the exposure alone, I mean, yeah. throughout the week and, and the weekends is oh, God, uh, play, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Weekends. I mean, I, it's yeah, crazy. I mean, I've seen what I've seen what the place in Farmingdale can do. I've seen what the place in Patchogue can do, and mm-hmm. you know, there we want to we want to collaborate with the you know the restaurants that have that kind of a following, like. Meatball Shop has a very significant following, and it's it's crazy. Like they're, I think they've been around longer than 
um, the meatball meatball place in in Manhattan, that whole chain thing. A meatball shop is in Manhattan. Meatball place Me- is out here. Oh yeah, meatball. But it's either yeah. way, you know yeah, they've been in there for though. a long time. Yeah, you know, we always been asked that. Yeah, are we the same place? Yeah, no. We started out in Patchog. Yeah. Um, I want to say five years ago, mm-hmm. four years ago, and they started doing oh, ridiculous business okay. out there in Patchog. Yeah. yeah, and then they opened up. Um, in the August of 2016, yeah, uh, out here in Farmingdale, and uh, it's been great ever since. I yeah, mean, so uh, yeah, basically constant flow of people. That's for sure. Yeah, mm. like basically, we want to we want to do what we can to help, you know, folks like Meatball Shop, Meatball Place. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I know. sorry, I, 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 I do it too sometimes. Um, yeah, we wanted we want to just be there for you know for these places that are so ingrained in the community that yeah. you know we're. Like we know what we are. We're not a place that's going to um you know, get you in for you know, we're not doing we're not doing can launches where people are waiting four hours online for beer. We're you know, we're doing something a little bit more low key. Yeah. You know, and, and I think more of a backbone of, yeah. of the beer scene here on the line. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, like we you know, um Destination Unknown in Bay Shore has had us on draft a few times. Um, Brewers Collective has had us on draft a few times. Yeah, taking two kegs, I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, they put it up there or not? Or they just yeah, drag no. it in the back? Yeah. It's, it's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, and that you know that's important to us because you know those guys don't well, they, have the recognition. The kind of, yeah. yeah, and and they know they yeah, but and, you know for us like we have a we have the ability to do you know a, a, a lager that takes a month. You know th- those guys don't necessarily have that time. Correct. So, you know when it turn and burn for most of them. Yeah, it when really when we have to or when they need something that kind of fills in uh, a spot on their lineup, be it wit, be it you know Isla del Fuego, like yeah. we're happy to we're happy to go and support that line too. Like you know it means just as much to us when people are going and supporting Dubco and thusly supporting Fire Island by drinking that beer at Dubco. Right. Um, you know, it, that means just as much to us as a line at, you know, uh, Meatball or, or wherever wherever else you want to go, you know. Like yeah. every, you know, every every little bit counts. And, you know, the fact that the bar and restaurant owners on the island have supported us the way they have is, you know, a really nice thing. So we're trying to kind of maintain that. As I go around, I, I noticed there's a lot of restaurants that, you know, they'll have the New Belgium, they'll have the, you mm. know, Lagunitas and stuff like that. But then they'll also dedicate like three or four taps per session mm-hmm. for local. And yeah. I like how they do that. It really is um, against like uh, supporting both yeah. back and forth, They're supporting local restaurants, and supporting local breweries. Yeah. That's really makes it nice. And I, I like to go to a restaurant and have a nice local beer with local food. It just makes sense to me. Yeah. It's what they've been promoting for years in Newsday, so might as well freaking <laughs> fall in line and, and yeah. march to their drum. I mean, you know, shout out to like, you know, places like Hoptron and and Oh absolutely, yeah. You know, Parlay and, and Tap and Barrel and the Lark. Like you know, those are the guys that, that are, you know, really like I mean they they do go out of their way to bring in local product. Correct. And you know, a lot of these I know people, someone that's gonna be reopening F and Groovin. Get out they're going to reopen it. Nice. I Boom. didn't. Uh, yeah, I saw. I saw. I just got the word last week, and uh, I know the person that's going to be reopening it, and hopefully we can get them in. And that was one that was, in our opinion, one of the first to have mm-hmm. craft brewery, local craft too. Yeah. On Long Island, like I couldn't find anywhere else. I didn't realize they actually closed. Yeah. I, I I had driven by there on the way home from Rockville Center the other day, and I was just like. It's not popping those, like why are those? I I was yeah. like, oh, they must be like shooting a movie or like re, <laughs> revamping the inside. Yeah. I mean, I worked in a place where they shot movies every once in a while oh, yeah, yeah. and they put plastic garbage yep. bags up and it was they not, need their not own sketchy lighting, at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no it was, doesn't uh, look like a broken down place whatsoever. Everyone's not dealing drugs out of there. Yeah, but no, uh, that's good. To, that's really good. To yeah, hear. yeah. They uh, they got to bring that back. It's a staple on Long Island in regards to the craft beer scene, and I think that was one of the ones that really uh, pushed it forward to a lot of the initial people that got into it not to mention you know the foosball and all that stuff but it was just that place it mm-hmm. was that place that really supported um craft beer and the movement and this was yeah. going back to what 2000 2001 yep and mm-hmm. they were doing it so it was amazing all right uh we're just gonna wrap it up here it's getting late it's almost 11 o'clock Pete. yep yeah i know <laughs> we had uh, too much fun with dan here 
I think that was, and we're gonna have to do a second. Thanks for show, coming in. That was which is gonna go another time. three hours, by the way. Probably no. I appreciate we, uh, you guys having me. Yeah, it's, dude, I, we really appreciate coming all the way out from Patrick. I didn't hey. realize it was all the way out there. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I made you, I'm now everybody's feeling guilty. And no, no. I, I really do. I'm just calling uh, their moms and apologizing for <laughs> stuff they never did. You set the precedent. You set the bar. And hopefully uh, your presence here doesn't make this show um, blow up so much so that we can't slate you in for a second show. But I really want you back here. And we will have you back here. Um, in the next few months, and especially if you're going to have some releases, anything, yeah. communicate with us. Let yeah. us know um, whether you're on or not. We really want to you know, keep supporting uh, Fire Island Brewing, and uh, we're going to probably try to do some road shows. So if we yeah. ever go to the brewery, we could do some shows there as well. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. again, if you, the thing with the, the beer shows, if you ever want to collaborate with that, we'll definitely be done with that, and we'll go from there and hopefully uh, establish a nice little relationship with you and the local breweries around us, and that's really our point, right? And, and to drink beer. And to drink beer. And to drink beer. Well, it's really, that. that's probably like priority one. And then after that, it's everything else I just said. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like being in the military. It's like, you <laughs> know, God country. But it's like, yeah, uh, we can swap one beer, of those. Beer, family. Oh, no, family's way down at five. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're going to trail them along with Long us Island, anyway. maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We can. <laughs> What is that, loyal to the soil, loyal and strong? I don't know. All right, right, Dan. Yeah, we really do appreciate you coming in. Uh, Folks, thanks a lot for listening in. This is The Work with Mike and Pete. Go to govsradio.com for all your replays. Visit us on our Instagram, The Word of Podcast, uh, spelled wart, pronounced wart, by the way. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We got it all now, Pete. I didn't even know We we are social media whores. And also (laughs) uh, go on to... (laughs) Uh, Fire Island Brewing, I think. Uh, bre- beer. Fire Island Beer. Fire Island at Fire Island Beer. Beer. Fire Island Beer.com. On yes. Instagram, on Twitter. Follow them. Find out new releases, tasting room hours. Uh, take a trek out there, man. The, everything that we had tonight was delicious, and I'm yeah. anticipating on uh, drinking a lot more. Uh, like I said, I can attest to the wit. I'm going to look wit. at that Maybach. Oh, uh, yeah. When you when that comes out, you definitely got to let us For know sure. about that. That's Absolutely, something we got to yeah. know about. We'll come in. Forget about a show. We're just going to come in and hang yeah. out. <laughs> Done. Fine. That's Fair. awesome. All right. Dan, night, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll catch you guys uh, in a couple of weeks in regards to a show. And uh, remember, beer is f- good. F***ing awesome. <laughs> good night, everybody. Pretty damn good. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> good night. Good night. Well, that's two hours of your life that you'll never get back. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Please hang up and try again. This has been the Words on Govs Radio. I hope you're drunk enough.